So MRD, which is measurable residual disease, has really become a standard of care in the treatment of patients with um, of adults with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But really, it's not um, obvious what that means when I say that. So I'm just going to kind of step through it a little bit. So in the U.S., we measure residual disease using flow cytometry as the most common method. And that's really much more obvious in B-cell ALL or pre-B-cell ALL, which is the most common one that's seen in adults. And so I'll start off with pre-B-cell ALL. In pre-B-cell ALL, we know that flow cytometry is a very meaningful method and that those patients who do not have evidence of measurable residual disease by sensitive flow cytometry, so not the same test that we do for diagnosis, but more sensitive flow cytometry, have a better outcome. So those who achieve MRD negativity after when they achieve a complete remission are more likely to stay in remission than those who do not achieve MRD negativity. So in our hands, what that means is those patients who are not MRD negative after induction therapy proceed on to additional therapy. And because blinitumumab has been approved in that setting, we will use blinitumumab for patients who are not MRD negative when they achieve a complete remission. And we further will then um, proceed to allogeneic transplant in that patient population. So even though we've achieved MRD negativity, hopefully after they get blinitumumab, we still do feel that patient population is the one that benefits most from allogeneic transplant. So that's kind of how we use MRD, but it leaves a lot of questions. So for example, in those patients who are MRD negative, a proportion of those will still relapse. And so is there more that we can do in that MRD negative patient population to decrease relapse? There's a study pending from ECOG 1910 that looked at whether or not giving blinitumumab to the MRD negative population is of benefit. We don't have that answer yet. Also, which patient population is most likely to stay MRD positive? We think that those who have Philadelphia chromosome-like disease are more likely to stay MRD positive. So can we do something during induction to make it less likely that those patients will become uh, that will remain MRD positive has been an effort of some of the research that is going on. And then the next question that comes up is those who are MRD positive after induction, who become MRD negative with blinitumumab, we now take to transplant, is that always necessary? So we do now know that MRD negativity is a goal. We know that MRD negativity predicts for uh, likelihood of not relapsing, but we still have those gaps that I mentioned in terms of approaches that we can take in patients who um, undergo ALL therapy with B-cell ALL. There are other populations as well. So in the B-cell population, we also have pH positive disease. There we measure MRD in two ways. We measure MRD both by flow cytometry as well as uh, by molecular studies looking for the uh, PCR for BCR ABLE. There's not always concordance between the two, and there's significant data showing that some patients can become MRD negative by flow, but retain PCR evidence of BCR ABLE and have outcomes that are just as good as those who are MRD negative by both. And thinking that the patients who are remain MRD positive by BCR able have more of a CML like prognosis and picture. And so again, we need to have more information there. And then the next question in that patient population is if you become MRD negative by flow, do you need a transplant? We've always thought that pH positive ALL needs a transplant. The pediatricians do not take their patients to transplant necessarily. So do we need to take adults to transplant if they become MRD negative? Again, a question that's unanswered. And then the third patient population is the T-cell ALL population. Again, we look at flow cytometry here, not clearly what needs to be done as the best way. IGH-PCR might be a better way of doing it. Clonoseq is available now and may be a way of looking for that. And we don't have as many interventions available for those who are MRD positive. The pediatricians use nilarabine, does not seem to be as effective in 
the adult population uh, in that we've seen so far as we have work to be done to achieve MRD negative in, in the T cell population.